We're trying out a new feed and water setup here on the pretend farm. And boy, am I stoked to show you this. But first, let me show you what led the pretend farmer into getting these things. Hello, YouTube world. Pretend farmer here. Not a real farmer, just pretending. You want to see something I find disgusting? Check this out. Look at all that waste. Chicken feed spilled on the ground everywhere. Money wasted and mice in the run. All because the chickens slam into their hanging metal feeder and sling feed everywhere. Here's how Pretend Farmer has done his chicken feed in the past. We have this big 80 pound feed storage container that has been stored in the building. And I would go to the farm store, buy a 50 pound sack of feed, dump it in there. And then this 15 pound hanging metal feeder would hang out in the coop. And when you've got 18 chickens, two of which are roosters, and they're hungry boys, they deplete one of these in not even three days. This would last about two and a half days. So every other day, pretend farmer was having to go into the building, scoop feed out of here, and fill that up for the chickens to enjoy. That's just their food. Now you might ask yourself, well, if you do the math on how much food a chicken's supposed to eat, that should last that many chickens more than two and a half days. Well, you're exactly right. On paper, it should. But in reality, a feeder that hangs and swings like this, the chickens are gonna bump into it. They're gonna rake feed out of it, make a huge mess. And if you have chickens, you know that spilled feed, they never really eat it all off the ground once it's on there. Then you've got all that feed laying around. They're walking on it, they're pooping in it. It's raining on it, it gets swampy. Then it starts to mold. Then you have mice coming in to eat the moldy feed on the ground. It's all just a downhill spiral from there. Once again, You've got 18 chickens. This holds a little over a gallon. It has to be filled up daily, especially when the pretend farm beagle is coming out and drinking it. I'm here to tell you there is an easier way. Let me show you. Say hello to my little friends. The coop works feed silo and water silo. A water silo with six drinkable nipples that holds eight gallons of water for your chickens. And a matching feeder that's mounted on a metal post that holds 40 pounds of feed. Holy cow, that's a lot of food and water. Now these things are made right here in America in North Carolina. It's a father-daughter team that designed these, Tom and Kate, down in North Carolina. And they came up with this design for their own chickens and they mass produced these things. There were only two hurdles that I really needed to address with this feeder and this waterer. It involved three of my chickens. Everybody else did fine with both right from the get-go. It took them maybe 10 minutes to learn how to drink the water. The feeder was pretty straightforward. But one of the problems I had was my two roosters have very big combs on their head. Buff Orbington, Salmon Favreau, they're known for having the great big floppy combs. They couldn't actually fit their head through the ports on the feeder. And I was afraid that my roosters were gonna go hungry. So I made a little modification. I took one of the red rubber rings off the ports on the side of the feeder over here, just to give a little more clearance for my rooster and see if he would use this thing. As you can see, he's got a pretty big head with that comb and all. Look at that though. He has no problem getting his head in there. He's kind of got a cock it sideways, but he can get in there and eat. The hens can stick their heads straight on through the regular ports. But I just made this one special little port there for my roosters to use. And they seem to be getting along really good with this feeder. After several days of use, there is no spillage whatsoever on the ground around this feeder. If this was my hanging metal feeder, it would have already been littered with pellets by now. Now you all know that I've got a chicken that's visually impaired. She can't see really well. One of the big concerns I had with this setup is was she gonna be able to see well enough to be able to go to that waterer and peck the nipples to get water? Much to my surprise, she actually has gotten along really well with this thing. She had a little bit of a learning curve where she had to hunt and peck around to find the nipples. 
but once she figured out that pressing in on those things dispensed water into her beak, she really has seemed to got the hang of it, and I think she's going to do really well with this in the long run. I'm just kind of monitoring to make sure that she is getting her full dose of water, as any responsible farmer would do. Now, if you're wondering what kind of customer service Coopworks has, I can tell you it is top notch. I actually had to contact them about my rooster not wanting to eat out of this feeder initially, and I got a response in less than a few hours. This was on a weekend, and they were the ones that suggested trying to remove one of those little port rings just to see if it gave them a little more clearance to get their heads through. And I gotta say, so far that has been the perfect solution. They don't seem to be able to still rake any feed out even with that being off of there. We're gonna try reinstalling it in a couple days and see if they can use it now that they're used to it. And if not, we'll just leave it off for that one port and it'll be the rooster port. Now this water silo here holds eight gallons of water. That is incredible. The lid simply lifts up and you can see there, I filled this thing not even full two days ago and it's only like three inches from the top. We still have like another foot of water left in there. I mean, this is great. No more having to fill the water up every single day. You know, one of the best parts about this is my dog and my cat cannot come and drink the water from these nipples. So not only is that gonna drastically reduce the amount of water we go through in a day, it's also gonna help keep the water a lot cleaner. That other one got nasty from the dogs lapping it up all the time out of the reservoir. It's made out of super strong, durable plastic that is gonna stand up to the sun's rays and all the elements of the weather throughout years and years and years, unlike those other cheap plastic feeders that are guaranteed to pretty much bust within about seven or eight months of use. As far as this feeder goes, the thing holds 40 pounds of feed. Most of your chicken feed comes in 50 pound bags. That means that by simply keeping a little five gallon bucket in my shed to keep what little bit of feed doesn't fit in here, I don't need any great big storage containers to hold my feed. The feed is simply all being stored right here. So I know what you're thinking. Well, aren't you worried about mold? I was a little worried about mold having this much feed out here for that long of a period of time. But after doing some research about how this thing's made, it's specially designed to prevent that from happening. Reason being, there's a cone-shaped funnel looking thing in the bottom of this that actually disperses that feed into this lower trough down here for the feed ports. So the feed that they're eating from down here is actually in a separate trough from what's being stored up here. And that means that if it rains super hard and it does actually blow water in these ports, you're not getting all this feed in here wet. It's just simply what's in this little trough down along the bottom. The chickens are going to eat it anyway. And the best part about this design is, unlike the buckets where you drill holes and put ports in, there's nowhere for the feed to hide. This thing here... They've designed it so that the gravity pushes it everywhere where the chickens can get it. There's no low spots. There's no elbows for it to stick in. It can't stay in there. They're gonna eat it before it molds, even if it gets wet. And that's what I really like about this, considering I am storing up to 40 pounds of feed outside in the elements. Just the very design of this thing is designed to taper water down and reflect it away from these ports. The fact that I have this one removed from my rooster not a big concern because of what I've already told you about. Now somebody's probably thinking, okay, well what about rats or mice? Can't they get in these ports? It would be very hard for a mouse to scale up this pole underneath here and get up in these ports, but it's not totally impossible, which is why they send covers that snap onto these if you need to cover it up at night. Now from what I've heard, most people never have to use those because just this very design makes it almost impossible for a mouse to get in there. I have heard that squirrels can sometimes get into them, but I don't know how you'd stop a squirrel from getting into any kind of chicken feeder, really. Now they make this thing in another variant that has legs that are adjustable that come out so that it's movable and you're not putting a stake down in the ground. Reason I went with this is because A, mice can get into the ones that have the legs going up. It is known for them to be able to get into those easier. So I wanted something that was a little more mouse proof, but I also was concerned with the high winds we get here. 
I wanted something really solid that wasn't going to blow over when it gets mostly empty and make a big mess everywhere. That defeats the purpose of going to a no waste feeder. This thing ain't going nowhere. They send really good stakes with them that you pound way down in the ground. It's rock solid. So you stake this thing down in the ground and you think, okay, that's a permanent fixture. It's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to clean it out if I ever need to do that. Let me show you something. All you got to do is grab and lift, and it comes right off the post. There's a hole up underneath the feeder where it slips down on top of that stake there, and it's super secure the way it sits. It's really easy to remove when you need to clean it. You just crack it open and fill it up with feed. If raccoons are a problem in your area, have no fear. They left you with a nice little latching system here that you can put a carabiner or a padlock, whatever you need to on here to keep coons or anything from stealing your feed by opening this lid. Now, Pretend Farmer was not sent these for free to show off and try and sell to people. I had to buy my own. So that means the Pretend Farmer actually paid full price for both of these feeders, not because I wanted to get into selling them or trying to market these, but because it was a product that I believed in and I knew they were well made and I wanted to give them a shot. I could really care less whether you buy one or not. It made a great review and I gotta say, these are not going anywhere. I'm not sending them back. They're gonna be a permanent fixture here on the pretend farm because they seem to do their job really well and I really like them. They're gonna save me a ton of work and the chickens love them. You know, it's great if you want to go on vacation to be able to leave your chickens for three, four, five days. And you know they're going to have water and food. These things, if you're busy, are the way to go. These things completely eliminate the need for daily chores. And they turn them into more like weekly. But having a setup like this does not mean that the pretend farmer is going to neglect his chickens now. What this does mean is that instead of having to come home and do chores before I get started making content to put on YouTube, Pretend Farmer can go straight to filming because I'll know that my chickens are already taken care of with food and water for days and days and days at a time rather than have to do chores daily. Now, if you don't want to have to stake these down in the ground, they do have what's called the X base, which is basically a big footprint for these to sit on that makes them a little more movable and you don't have to mess with driving the stake down in the ground. Now the Pretend Farmer is actually an affiliate with Coop Works. Don't get excited, don't let anybody do it. But in a nutshell, what that means is if you like what you see and you want to get one of these, you can take the link that I'm going to give you in the video description. And what that'll do is it'll give you $10 off your purchase. I'll get a tiny little commission, I think like 5% or something like that, for each one that gets bought when that link is used. Gives me a good deal gives you a good deal. You're probably wondering by now, is there anything you don't like about these? All you've done is brag about them. If there was two things I could change on them, A, it would be bigger ports on the feeder for my rooster to get his giant noggin in. And the other thing is the price is a little high on them. I'm not gonna lie, these things are not cheap. They're not cheap at all. And if you've just got three or four chickens, it's not worth it for you to get these. This is something where your next level, you wanna take things up a notch. And I will say, the plastic that these things are made out of is not cheap. It's thicker than what's on my car bumper. So they did not go cheap on the plastic. Very hardcore, built to last. They're made in America. You don't always get what you pay for, but you never get what you don't pay for. All you gotta do is make a couple of trips to donate some plasma and you'll have the funds to buy these. So I'd encourage you to go check them out. This might just be the solution to make your chores a whole lot easier on your own pretend or real farm. Now, when I talked to Tom with Coop Works and we talked about the issue that I had with the roosters not being able to use the feeder, I gotta say, he was very willing to give me my money back if I couldn't find a way to get this to work out. So they're very easy to work with. They have like a 30 day guarantee. If you're not 100% satisfied, you box these up and send them back. And they were gonna let me do that too. But uh, I'm definitely keeping these. And I actually, after talking with him about the problem I had, it sounds like it's a very isolated incident. He said there's only a few other people that he's heard of having that problem. 
but I told him if you ever want to test one of these and need a guinea pig to try out one with bigger ports for roosters, I told him to float one our way and we would do a review on it. I didn't really get a yes or a no on that, but he said he's looking into the way that they could change the design to maybe make it a little more rooster friendly down the road. So I guess we'll see what comes from that. I'd highly recommend these. Go check them out. Remember, the Pretend Farmer's an affiliate. So if you decide to buy, click my link, you get a discount, Pretend Farmer gets a commission. We're making money on the farm, finally. Well, not really, but maybe.